An American League battle, East versus Central. We'll see the Boston Red Sox as they play against the Chicago White Sox. It's the MLB on 2K Sports. It's all about the American League. The Chicago White Sox, they're looking to get one in front of their home fans. He is electric. That describes Jake Peavy. And he's out there on the mound, and we'll have a chance to watch it. Glad you could be with us, 2K Sports Major League Baseball. And Steve, as he faces these Boston hitters, what will be the focus? Well, as a hitter, you take a look, you know you're facing Jake Peavy in this one, and you know, you've got some concern because he has that explosive fastball and then that nasty slider. Peavy gets so many ground ball outs, he keeps the ball in the ballpark. As a hitter, you want to try to get him to elevate his pitches and hit a mistake. Lineup time, courtesy of Pepsi. Here's a look at how Terry Francona's set. And it's Jacoby Ellsbury leading off the game. Boston losing last night. Disappointing series it has been. Now 0-3 in a four-game set against the White Sox. Cutter just misses. 1-0. He just could not string anything together at the plate in that game. Now their bats were pretty much shut down. Good pitching stopped them. Swing and a miss by Ellsbury. Count even. Career number 411 off the White Sox. He takes a fastball for a strike. Now it's one and two. Peavy winds up for the one two pitch. It's hit foul by Ellsbury. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Good eye there. Jacoby Ellsbury lays off at the even the count. 2 2 pitch. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Swing him up one down. This is where you want to go with two strikes on the hitter. You want to go down out of the zone. He swings through it. Couldn't make contact with that one. And it's Dustin Pedroia in the box now. Watches that one high and outside. Calls strike one. The pitch. Strike two with that. No balls, two strikes. Droya now short in the swing, short enough on the bat. Well, he gets the breaking ball right over the heart of the plate. He must have been looking for something else. And he'll just keep it himself, tanking for the up. And here's Kevin Euclid. Base is empty and two down. Set up away. Cutter misses. One and zero. Oh. Now the one zero oh pitch. Back up the middle. Oh, that'll move you on the mound. He just barely got out of the way. Fielded by Ramirez. And with two down, they've got a man on board. Well, with that big two out hit right there in this inning, you know the managers in there telling them, "Let's not let him breathe. Let's not let him get that third out. Let's Ball. score before this inning's over." Ground ball, Creedy. And that'll put Martinez on it first now. And now's a good time to take a brief look how the White Sox stack up defensively. Steve, any individual standout? Joe Creedy has great reactions in the hot corner here. He gets great instincts to be able to move, glove the ball, and a strong, accurate arm. And Mike Cameron up. Called strike, and PB's got him on one. I don't think he liked that call very much, but the reality is. He couldn't hit that any day of the week. That's a great pitch. And that's a strike. Cameron, who does strike out, will have to be careful here. Oh. Tried to get him to go after that slider, but it's one and two. The one-two pitch. Oh. Swung on and fouled away. And here's the pitch. You're Tremendous out. pitch right there. Mike Cameron caught looking strike three. And Jake Peavy is heading in. He's got two strikeouts already. And the White Sox, their first chance is coming. And we've got John Lester out on the mound. He gets settled in for Boston. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? But John Lester has really started to figure out what he is as a pitcher. In this game, keep an eye on that four-seam fast. Blake and run up. Swung on, a fly ball heading towards the corner and right. It's back towards the wall, and he still puts it away. 
number 10. And it's Alexei Ramirez Alexei. now. One away. One of the best batting averages in the league. At the belt, Lester kicks, Great throws. One. Swings a little early that time, 0 and 1. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. And it's 0 and 2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. Uh, he drove in three runs in that ball game last night and got the job done when runners got on base. Good circle change that time, but it's called a ball. One and two. Hard grounded a short. Scooter rope. And so Ramirez retired. Line up for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Scouting report, John. How about some picks? Well, when you watch Johnny Damon, you don't want to emulate his swing. It's not one of the prettiest swings you ever see in baseball, but it is one of the more effective ones. He's got power. He can hit for average. And when he gets on base, he's a threat to steal. Here's the 0-1 from Lester. Strike two, no balls and two strikes. Conurco now will look to tighten up that zone. That one swung on, hit in the air to deep right center field. And it's going to be Cameron. And there's the third out. And so John Lester gets him. That's one, two, three. And it can be tough. Sometimes you get that odd shadowing. It makes it hard to see the ball when you're at the plate. Those clouds move around. Smash towards the middle. Beckham. So Beltre is set down. And now a chance to see where the Red Sox sit in the American League range. Second batting average with runners in scoring position. Third in runs. They also show up in the top five in home runs in their league, showing that power is a major part of this club's offense, that ability to bang it over the wall. And it's Jeremy Hermida at the ball. Oh. Fastball misses away. 1-0. Strike one, Peavy evens the count. Now that he's gotten the four-seamer down and in, look for him to go outside now. 1-1 one, one pitch is a cut fastball. Take him for a strike, one and two. The one-two on its way. Still one and two. Here's the delivery. And he strikes out her knee on a swing and a miss. With two strikes, the hitter wanted the faster. He, he got it, but didn't do anything with it. And it's Jason Veritek at the plate. Two outs, bases empty. Swing and a bouncer up the middle. And Ramirez fields the ball. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. It's a nice day here, a little bit on the chilly side, but certainly not enough to detract from the game. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He's the league leader in ribbies. Hit sharply towards the hole. And that's out number one, stepping in the back. And Beckham's in the box. Nobody on base, one away. Needs a little vision clarity here. That one he went after, and it was clearly in the dirt. John Lester ahead on the count, 0 and 2. Why, well, anytime you see that curveball leave the pitcher's hand, you have to think it's going to break down and in. But when it starts out over the plate and you give up on it, it breaks over that outside corner, makes it so devastating and almost impossible to hit, as you saw there. So Alex Rios, he'll try and keep it going. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch, 0 and 1. At the belt, Lester kicks, right throws. Two. That's a strike, and it's 0 and 2. Time for Rios now to protect. What an outstanding pitch. Changing speeds, hitting your spots. Throw You're that out. change up away. And a descending with a nice piece of pitching work as he gets the K. And a good half inning there, gone in short order in this one. Still scoreless in Chicago. And if you are just tuning in, hi, Gary Thorne, along with John Crux, Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. 
And we're going to see Scudero here. Taps this one foul oh. to the right. And it's on to Marco Scudero. He's got to protect the plate on this next pitch. And Marco Scudero misses. Strike three. That's a pretty fast pitch right there. And hard to get that much break on it. With two strikes, the hitter wanted the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. And Jacoby Ellsbury to bat. And he steals off, and then he gets away with it. He's one of the league's best. Well, they set up inside, but he threw it a little too far inside. Take your base. That'll bring up Dustin Pedroia. Look, Gary, we see that guy get hit with a pitch. I mean, sometimes, listen, as a pitcher, you just lose a grip on the ball. It doesn't come out of your hand the right way. You end up hitting somebody. Well, working on the 0-1 count now. And the question after you've hit a batter like we've seen here, Steve, is as a pitcher getting your focus back. Yeah, but listen, it's only one run around. Take a deep breath. Get yourself back and settle down a little bit and, and make sure you're right. And Pedroia has got himself a single. At so plate, that puts Kevin Euclid at the plate. 0 oh, 2 counts. So you protect the pitch that's up. So a little easier to do that. Absolutely. You can fight it off, punch it over the infielder's head. That time, solid piece of hitting. Back behind second. And in there, Boston for a run. Openings for this lineup offensively. Don't give it to them now because they are hot. Victor Martinez. Well, the starting pitching in this game has been absolutely outstanding. So coming through right there in the clutch to bring that first run of the game across has to build confidence for the rest of his team. And it's Victor Martinez in the box now. This offense has taken some hit hard to second. He grabs it off the hole. That's one out. And a double play. They got a move. First run of the game, third inning. They'll try to build on that momentum. The Red Sox on top, one to nothing. Bottom three, do up next. Well, we can see Terry Francona looking on. Things have been going right for him. His ball club today, uh, last half inning, they proved productive. Now they're looking to expand up. It's going to be Przinski. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0 and 1. Here's the 0-1 from Lester. And that's a strike. A.J. Przinski now behind on the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Well, that's a great location. Down in the strike zone with that curveball. And like the right there, he's got a swing and miss. But even if they make contact, you're going to get a grounder somewhere to your infield. Got him there. That was a nice strike. Greedy into the batter's box. Up the middle, Lester. That's two gone. Yeah, a little ways to go here in the season. The American League wild card. How's it look? Well, let's take a look. Brought to you by State Farm. First place, the Angels. In second place, the Yankees. Orioles, third place. Fourth place, the Royals. It's the Blue Jays in fifth. And down at the bottom, the Oakland A's. I've got such a great race right now for the wild card of the American League. And these teams are going to be playing playoff baseball all the way down to game 162, which has set them up nicely for playoff baseball. Only five pitches to get out of that inning. That'll rest your mind. Red Sox still ahead. And it's Mike Cameron in the box now. Called out on strikes in his last appearance. Cameron gets set. Here's the first pitch. Called strike. And Phoebe's got him on one. And you can hit your spot with that kind of movement down and into the hitter. You're way ahead of the game. And he leaves that one alone. Mike Cameron, that patience, gets the count even. Lifetime four for 15 off Jake Peavy.
Here's the 2 1. That one is swung on and missed by Cameron. Count is even. Now Przinski positions himself. Still 2 2. Now the 2 2. It's fouled off. Well, the pitcher wanted it, the catcher wanted it, the whole team, has, all of his teammates wanted that pitch. They want this at bat to end. I think to me, though, the longer this one gets extended, this hitter has the advantage. Let's see how it unfolds. Beavy misses. He's out of the zone down low. This cut fastball is a very effective pitch for this guy because it allows him to set up all of his other pitches. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. And it drops the base hit. That's going to bring up Adrian Beltre. Chance to view the teams who have crossed the plate the most times this year. Courtesy of State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Yankees. Third spot, the Red Sox. Jays fourth. And for the Orioles, shot back to first. And that gets it done. Beltre, a base hit. Here's a great chance for Boston. A perfect situational hitting. This is exactly the time you want to go the other way. And what we're talking about is taking the ball where it's pitched. It's outside. Go the other way. And it's Jeremy Hermida at the plate. Good odds here. Six ABs, two hits, lifetime against the White Sox. Got a feeling on this visit to the mound there's going to be a little deep chatter going on. I think a little heart to heart out there. A little challenge from the manager to see how he's ball. doing. Also probably talking a little bit of strategy. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Catcher can't control it. Oh, and here he goes now for third. And they'll just have to sit on this one so everybody's safe. Here's the 2-0 pitch. A shot up the middle, fielded by Ramirez. And Cameron crosses the plate. Boston, what offensive production right now. Well, as a pitcher, there's absolutely nothing you can do about this. You hate these type of hits, but he makes a great pitch. Ball just hit in an absolute perfect spot where no one can get to it in time to beat him on the throw to first. First pitch on the way. Veritek a swing and a fly ball to left center field. What Beltre is going to try and score. And the throw. And Beltre will score. Steve got a fly ball on that. Not easy to do in that pitch down where that was. Well, that's right. I mean, he went down and got it. He drove the ball and made an out, but at least allows the runner to advance. And we're going to see Scudero here. Swung on, line softly, left side. And it's caught by Ramirez. And he'll go back to first. We're seeing some late September baseball now. Looking at the State Farm standing board. This is how the Central Division stands. First place, the White Sox. In second place, it's the Royals. Third place goes to the Indians. Twins are fourth. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. The Chicago White Sox on fire right now, back from the dead. They couldn't do anything right before. And now they're doing everything right. And it's Jacoby Ellsbury at the plate. One of the best base dealers in the AL. And he watches a cut fastball to start the at-bat for strike one. It's hit foul by Ellsbury. Oh. Ellsbury fouls off another. Well, even though he's still behind in the count, it's got to give himself a lot of confidence to know that this You're guy out. threw one of his best pitches, that strikeout pitch, and he still put it in play to foul it off. Now he's in the pitcher's head. They score two runs, two hits, one left on. Boston on top by three. So Johnny Damon leads it off. Fielder, number 18, Johnny Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. Good pitch from Lester, swung out and missed. Look here, they're going through the lineup the second time around right here. They don't have any hits, so they've really got to start thinking about what are they doing at the plate and should they be more aggressive right now. Oh, won the count right now after he fouled off that first one. There's a swing and a liner. And that's in there. The White Sox get a man on. Right, 
stops at second. Two bagger. State Farm takes a look at our leaders at extra base hits in the league. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five. At the belt, Lester kicks, throws. Hit hard on the ground towards third. And so Ramirez retired. And be sure to tune in next Sunday. You'll be watching the Arizona Diamondbacks playing on the road. They find themselves at Dodger Stadium to take on the Dodgers. The action gets started at 4 Eastern. Paul Canerco to the plate, runner in scoring position. Right there in the top five in home runs. And he starts Canerco out. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. And here's Damon going to try to score. And the run is in. Boy, the continuation here of this offense is called big time momentum. Number 20, Carlos Clayton. And Steve, this one turns into a nice one run RBI. You leave a pitch up in the zone like that, hitters are going to hammer it. That's what happened. Run scored, another runner on base. Hit hard on the ground to short. The second, there's one. Now over to first and safe at first. Close play, not quite enough time to get him. Well, they get the lead runner at second, but they just couldn't turn two. No, they wanted to. And Beckham's in the box. He has not hit well in this particular matchup. Only 136 against the Red Sox. And this at bat already 0-1. First pitch was a strike. Well, the hitters are going to have to be ready for that long, arching curveball because he can locate that pitch and throw it at just about any time of the count for a strike. There's a swing high and deep into center field. Way, way back there. Goodbye, a two-run homer. This two-run homer ties the game up. Clutch piece of hitting. I credit the White Sox offense attacking, trying to do what they can to bring this thing back, evening it up. Tie game now. Let's see if they can add on some more runs, Gary. Swung on by Rio, strike one. Steve, uh, this kind of home run to tie a game, you get it late, everybody's standing, you were hoping for it. You kind of hope, I guess, you're not hoping for it this early, but they got it. Well, but they're showing they can match, you know, swing for swing what the other team's doing, so it can make a big difference. From his knees, he got him. What a play. John Lester, you have to adjust, Kenny. We'll see after that in Giving up one home run in the ballgame. We're through four in And Dustin Pedroia to lead it off. One for two in the ballgame. Number 15, Dustin Pedroia. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Right it's now 0-1. Watch that fastball go by. Well, they set up down and away. They throw it down and away. That's how you can be effective as a major league pitcher. And Dustin Pedroia watches that one go by. The count is even. 330 career average against the White Sox. Pedroia will foul that one away. Not a pretty pitch, no damage. Ball. And that one will head all the way to the backstop for a ball. Here's the payoff pitch. You're Struck out. him out, and an excellent season continues. This punch out number 200. Couldn't make a better two strike pitch right there. He's working well with the catcher, hitting his spot, powering that fastball down and away. Here's the first delivery to Euclid. That one swung on its line. I come able to pull that one in. In a moment here, let's take a look at our State Farm League leaders in slugging. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Blue Jays. Third spot, the Red Sox. The Yankees, fourth. And we've got the Rangers. They are fifth. Well, when you go into a game and you're facing a team that has a slugging percentage as equal as you, and you're one of the top teams in baseball, here's what the pitcher has to do. 
chuck and duck because you throw it over the plate, these two teams are going to put it in play and put it in play with a lot of power. You could better hope your outfielders have the running shoes on because they're going to do a lot of work in this one. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. Throws on the first side is retired. Three up, three down for Jake Beebe. He has six strikeouts now. And it'll be the White Sox. Once again, taking a look at you right there. Ball club tied up right now. Lots of baseball to go, though. Leading it off, A.J. Brzezinski. He's a big home run guy, top 10 in the league right now. Dan Martinez setting his target. Swung and a fly ball. And a foul ball. At the belt, Lester kicks, throws towards center field, and Cameron makes the play. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in doubles, first in batting average, and they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners, this lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient, they let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. So Jim tell me coming up well, he stayed behind the ball right there real well got himself that one out base hit what a year for him top five in homers runner at first with one down here it comes swing and a miss for strike one but Gary he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate day in and day out that consistency is critical to their success. And that's a strike. Tomei is going to have to hit with a little less of a cut here. I looked locked in last night the way he swung the bat. Good stroke, good contact. See if he can't get it going again today to add those two hits from yesterday. For the Chicago White Sox. Well, he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. But he made it look easy right there. Slicing and dicing, just attacking the strike zone. Three pitches, all for strikes, sit down. And it's Johnny Damon. He's got one of the best averages in the American League. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, he'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. If I pulled the string on that curveball, took a little bit off and had him way out in front. Throw in time. Forces him at second for the third out. No runs, one hit, and no one left on base. We've got a stalemate going. And if you've just joined us, our broadcast of Major League Baseball on 2K Sports with John Crook and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. Mike Cameron to lead it off. The city doesn't have a short memory when he gets in that batter's box. Cameron gets set. Here's the first pitch. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. His batting average, lifetime, 310 against the White Sox. Strike two. PB dominating in this AB. He's got some pitches to play with. When you throw that breaking pitch up and in, it's dangerous because a lot of times the hitter will open up giving on the pitch. That's the one pitch he has left to hit, but he got away with one there. And it's fouled away. Peavy winds up for the one-two pitch. And he fouls off another one. Well, anytime you're behind in the count, you just want to try to spread out and try to put the ball in play. And that's what he did right there. He didn't put it in play, though, but he kept it foul to keep the at-bat alive. You're and out. Mike Cameron goes down swinging. That's strike three. Good movement, 89 miles per hour. He camp shows it to you. A breaking ball right there gets him to swing. You can see that back leg kind of jelly bit a little bit. Really used the off-speed pitches during that at-bat to get it over with. First one to Beltre. Here's the pitch. Ball. Nope, that one not in there. PV missing. This cut fastball is a very effective pitch for this guy because it allows him to set up all of his other pitches. Beltre on a swing and a miss to even the count. Hitting 250 lifetime against Jake PV. It's hit foul by Beltre. At the belt, PV kicks and throws. Ball. And Beltre, another foul ball. 
Well, you know the pitcher wants to get this strikeout right here, but the last thing he wants to do when he's ahead in the count is You're make out. a mistake. And the more balls he keeps fouling off in tough situations, the more chance of a mistake coming. The pitcher has to keep his focus right here. And it's Jeremy Hermida at the plate. Bounced into a fielder's choice as last time. Oh. Nope, that one not in there. PV missing. The 1 0 now. Jeremy Hermida swings and misses. Down to zero. The 1 1 pitch. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. And he's there to retire the song. No hits. Nobody left off. In camera, we get a look at Terry Francona. You can sort of feel that hunger first and foremost, making sure his staff can do their part. And uh, in the batter's box, it swung on, hit sharply to first. And that's out number one as he takes it to the bag. And it's Paul Canerco now. Couple of hits, ten lifetime tries against John Lester. And he starts Canerco out. Takes that one low and outside, 0 1. A oh, good life on this fastball as he just buries it down and away. Oh! That's it, foul by Canerco. And Paul Canerco strikes okay. out, could not make contact. We're going to take a look at the 12 6 curveball on the K here. Carlos Quinton at the plate with two away. He's number one in runs scored in the league. At the belt, Lester kicks, throws, cut fastball, swung on and missed, 0 and 1. The pitch can't catch up with that swing and a miss, and it's now 0 and 2. This one has popped up to the left side out of play. Big swing and a miss. Carlos Quentin goes down swinging. No runs, no hits, no one left on. Red Sox three, the White Sox three. And it's Jason Veritek now. He'll lead off the seventh. First pitch on the way, Veritek. Veritek. Called strike, and PB's got him on one. Unless you stay back and really think about going the other way, you've got no chance of hitting that four seamer down the way. That's a strike, and it's 0 2. Time for Veritek to protect here. That's swung on and a liner here. And it's caught by Ramirez. He's retired 10 in a row. The hitters are completely overmatched right now. He's got it all going on. Oh! Peavy misses. He's out of the zone down low. We're looking at this guy's pitch count. He's up over 80 pitches thus far. You wonder how long they're going to let him go. Gets in front, stopped it. It's in the dirt. He looks at that fastball, called strike, two and one. Strike two one pitch is a slider, taking for a call strike two. He wanted to go down and away with that slider, but he left it up and away, had just enough movement on it to get the strike. Slider misses, takes the count full. Well, this would be a perfect pitch if it stayed in the zone. This slider on the ground to short. Fielded by Ramirez. Retiring Skidero. Look at the Eastern Division race now as the season winds down, courtesy of State Farm. In that first spot, it's the Red Sox. In second place, the Yankees. Orioles, third place. Fourth place, the Blue Jays. And it's the Rays in the last slot. Uh, once again, the Boston Red Sox on top of their game, playing solid, consistent baseball day in and day out. And that's why they're sitting atop of the American League East once again. Strike two. Peavy dominating in this A.B. He's got some pitches to play with. This is the go-to pitch for many pitchers in the major league. The fastball down and away. When in doubt, that's where you go. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Hit on the ground, up the middle. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. Three up, three down. Comes in the box. He homered earlier in the ball game. A uh, complete game here for him. I mean, you talk about the RBI, the homers, and this guy's doing everything today. Good pitch from Lester. Swung on and missed. 
That fastball up and in is one of the toughest pitches to hit because oh. most hitters have a hole right there. You just can't get the bat head to the ball. One Waves to the fastball on that 1-1 one, one pitch. Strike two. That one's drilled to short. And Beckham set down. Here are the top batting averages for this month. Our State Farm leaderboard. All of these guys quality contact hitters. And, you know, when you're that kind of a hitter, it means that you can hit any kind of pitch the pitcher throws, and you're using the whole field. You're hitting it where it's pitched. And Alex Rios up. Swing sits this one pretty well. Deep right center. It's off the wall on a hop. The throw. A good job right there. Getting on base here with one away. Standing on second base. Now a single will score. Cast to drive it a run. A.J. Przinsky. And the first pitch. Ball belted deep left center field. Way back, way back. Perfect time for a two run homer. That's what they wanted to get the advantage. Couldn't be happier right now. They've got the hits they needed. They've taken the lead. They're looking to add on more, hoping to end up winning this game. First pitch to Creedy. A smash to first. Now the State Farm leaderboard. Who has the power bats this month? Got some big time power hitters right here. Some guys that look to drive the ball out of the ballpark and swing hard in case they hit it. When they make contact, they can do some serious damage. Now Jim Tomey. Tomey gets in. Here's the first delivery. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. 0 and 1. The batter was obviously looking for something else. You see how way out in front he was on that swing. Tomey will foul that one away. And Martinez setting his target. There's contact. He drove it well. And it's going to be Cameron. He comes up with it easily here. Now up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. And it's going to be Ramon Ramirez on the mound. As the Red Sox bring him in as a reliever. Well, if you can get a start like this every time out from your starting pitcher, you're going to take it. He kept you in the ball game, pitched pretty well, and now turns it over to the bullpen. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, he'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. Ball. Last ball is a waste pitch that time, one and two. Here's the pitch. You're out. Strike three. Damon on a swing and a miss turned away. They pick up a couple to break the tie. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. And Dustin Pedroia to lead it off. Second base, number 15, Dustin Pedroia. Pretty Garcia is going to be pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. Well, this was an outstanding performance today. I mean, that's good starting pitching right there. He won't be able to finish what he started, but he pitched a heck of a ball game. Grounded up the middle, fielded by Ramirez, and that sets down Pedroia. One down. Here's Kevin Euclid. Here's the first delivery to Euclid. Called strike. Garcia got that one in. It's on one. Now you're up by two uh, runs here with one out. And obviously, you know, this is where you want to try. And that's hit Damon to field. And Euclid retired. Two men have been put away. Number 41. And it's Victor Martinez at the plate. Ground out victim last time through. Base is empty with two outs. Garcia gets set and delivers. The 0-0 delivery of fastball taken for a strike. 
A two down, you want a two out rally right here in the eighth inning. And you just don't want to put it all on the ninth inning and, and wait for that to happen. Force something to happen right here. Try to manufacture a run and narrow the deficit by just a little bit. Swing and a miss. Three strikes on Victor Martinez. He's down. And a good defensive half inning. Three up, three down. White Sox five, Boston three. And welcome to those of you just tuning in, 2K Sports, Major League Baseball. This is Gary Thorne along with Steve Phillips and John Crook. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Smash towards the middle. Scooter rope, one away. But look at the staffs who have been sitting batters down over the last 10. Brought to you by State Farm. The Yankees, number one. Second, the Tigers. Third spot, the Red Sox. Indians, fourth. And we've got the Twins, who are number five. Well, these staff. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Pedroia. And Canerco retired. And it's Carlos Quinton on the box now. First pitch to Quinton. Oh, and he swings on a dirt pitch. Guess he couldn't see that one. Here's the delivery. Strike With that two. strike, Ramirez out in front now 0-2. Well, this one here was no doubt about it. The late break on that slider. I mean, what a devastating one, pitch, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. One-two pitch coming. Big swing and a miss. Carlos Quentin goes down swinging. In, out of the inning. Six pitches, and it's over. And the Red Sox. Look at the manager, Isaac Gian. He's got his club where he wants. Two insurance runs and hoping to close this one out. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. Chicago is ready to try and close this one out. And Steve, as he gets into this Boston lineup, what are we going to Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. And he tracks that one down. Well, one out here in the ninth inning, they still need two, so they need to get people on and advance base runners. Do what they have to do to get runners in scoring position and hope they run into that clutch base hit. Here. And that's in there. Jenks ahead 0-1. Well, oh, it's a quick swung on, hit sharply to first. And he steps on first. That's the second out. Well, it's, it's, uh, their hope is dwindling right now. You're down by two. One out left to play with. And they're going to have to try to come up with some big hits right here to try to win this one, Gary. And it's Jeremy Hermida. He's gone one for one lifetime off Bobby Jenks. There's a strike at the knees on one. That's a good, hard fastball right there. Let's see if he comes back with another one now. On the way. Swung on and missed, and this game's history. But Gary, Chicago comes away. The victors in this one, they play good all-around solid baseball with contributions from many players. And time to present the Pepsi Clutch Performer Award. You know, sometimes you hear guys say, well, they hit a meaningless home run, but that's not the case in this game today. Yes, he only had one hit, but that big home run that he delivered sealed the deal for his team, and you can't find a more appropriate reason to be named the Pepsi Clutch Performer. And Steve, that ought to send these folks home happy. Well, no question about it. They get the win in a close game, a lot of excitement and enthusiasm, and ready for the next one. Well, that time again, thanks for being with us today, Major League Baseball. Steve Phillips, John Crock, and the rest of our great 2K sports crew. I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks, everybody.